Here are seven reasons why it might not be worth it to have an ACL surgery. Reason number one is that there's growing research evidence, medical research evidence, showing that it's possible to heal naturally from an ACL tear and never have to have surgery. There are researchers that are making connections they're researching groups of people that have surgery and people that don't have surgery and they're tracking them both healing the same afterwards there's slight variations in the percentage of, of people that healed and had positive outcomes and who's to know if the way they did the research throws off those, those percentages but the fact is that there are more research studies coming out over the years that show that it's possible. Reason number two is that there is research showing that surgery in other body parts is actually being shown to not be necessary. There's two that I want to tell you about in specific. One is in the knee. There have been studies done in people that have had a meniscus tear where they've been given a placebo surgery. These are done in Europe where they went in, they made incisions, but they never touched the meniscus, and then they allowed the people to recover afterwards, and they compared these people with those that did have an actual normal meniscus surgery, and they found that both groups healed about the same, they had the same outcomes afterwards. They did a similar research study with people that have had rotator cuff tears, where they did a placebo rotator cuff surgery, and they found similar results where both groups, the ones that had the actual normal rotator cuff repair surgery and those that had a placebo or a fake rotator cuff repair surgery, they both improved about the same afterwards. Now there have not been studies like this done for the ACL, so we don't know. Just because the research isn't out there doesn't mean that it's not possible, but along with that growing research that I told you back in point one, it's truly possible. That leads me to reason number three, there's so many cases out there publicly known, even high profile athletes that did not have an ACL reconstruction surgery after tearing their ACL. And there's, if you just Google this, if you Google ACLs healing without surgery or celebrity or athlete healing their ACL without surgery, just look up case studies of ACLs healing without surgery and you will find tons of them out there. Normal people, people that are very athletic, people that are not athletic, they are healing themselves and getting back to things, their, their normal activities without having surgery. Reason number four that it may not be worth it to have surgery after having an ACL tear is that the recovery times are roughly the same. And this is the same thing that happened when they were doing the placebo surgeries for the rotator cuff tears and for the meniscus tears. And they've also done a similar one for disc herniations in the back where they did discectomies. They healed about the same rate. They took about the same amount of time to recover from surgery as they did to recover from the injury without having the surgery. So this raises the question, if it's possible for you to heal without ever having a surgery, and it takes about the same amount of time, then why go through the surgery? Now, I've even had some people argue that it's possible that getting the surgery may allow you to take longer because they're cutting on things. They're actually creating more injury. After all, surgery is a controlled injury to the body with hopes that you're gonna heal better and have better outcomes, but we don't always know that that's going to happen for sure. Reason number five, that it may not be worth it to have an ACL reconstruction surgery is that you can always choose to have it later and see if you can heal naturally in the meantime. You can take months, maybe even a year or more to give it a good go, to see if it's possible for you to do the right things to heal naturally and skip on the surgery. In some cases, medical professionals might tell you, go ahead and get the surgery soon. And especially if you're in a higher pressure situation, like you have to get back to doing some physical activity that's going to potentially challenge your knee and you need that ACL to be 100%, especially if you're in a, in a sporting situation or, or a professional athlete situation, then you really get pushed into having a surgery really fast. But if you're not in that situation, and I would even argue if you are in that situation and you have the time and space to take some time off and recover, you can probably heal in just as much time as if you did not have surgery. What medical professionals will tell you is that you're more guaranteed or there's a higher chance 
that you'll recover at a certain rate that's more uh, known if you do have the surgery because we know how much it takes to recover, how much time it takes to recover after the surgery versus if you don't have the surgery, then there's a bit of uncertainty in how long it's going to take to recover. But what we're finding in research studies out there is that it takes about the same amount of time to heal naturally as if you had the surgery. Reason number six is that there is a possibility of surgical complications. The most common being an infection due to the, the surgical cleanliness, but also surgical errors can be made. And there's problems that occur in the rehabilitation after the surgery happens that could be a complication as well. All of these things might ruin the surgery or just not give it the full effectiveness that it's intended to have. And if you hadn't had the surgery, then you don't put yourself at risk for surgical complications. And reason number seven is related to the surgery as well. If you end up having the surgery, then typical ACL surgeries these days need to take a piece of tendon from another area in your knee, usually the patellar ligament on the front of the knee, the one that connects from the kneecap down to the shin bone. They'll take a section of that and use it as a graft, as a, as a new ACL inside your knee, or they'll take a section of your hamstring tendon to put as the graft in the, as a new ACL inside the knee as well. Well, doing this makes your patellar tendon, patellar ligament slightly weaker or your, your hamstring muscle and the tendon that attaches to it slightly weaker as well. And so this changes the function of your knee and most of the time people have residual pain, residual discomfort as a result of them taking a section of tendon or ligament from another part of your body. Now, in my honest opinion, as an experienced manual physical therapist, I'm a specialty therapist who helps people heal naturally to avoid unnecessary surgery, injections, and pain medications. I've helped so many people recover from a torn ACL without ever having surgery. And I've even helped people that have had an ACL surgery and then they were still having knee problems afterwards for them to get back to feeling 100% and getting back to running, jumping, physical activities, even competitive sports by following a specific treatment process that allows them to fix the root muscle imbalances that takes excessive tension off the ACL ligament. This is really important because surgery does not take tension off the ligament. If you don't remove that tension, then you're going to be predisposed to recurring knee problems after you've had an ACL tear. Most of the time, people end up having an ACL tear because it's related to them having a muscle imbalance, something that sets them up to move their knee inappropriately. Sure, there's accidents that happen, but it's always arguable that if you didn't have that muscle imbalance, could your knee have taken it? Was your ACL pre-weakened going into that accident where somebody fell into you or you took a bad step? I am a huge proponent of making your legs as strong as possible with proper muscle balance so that your ACL is very healthy going into sports and it can take an awkward force from the side or a funny fall on your leg. You can do those things without putting your ACL in a terrible position where it's going to tear. I teach all my clients here in my clinic how to move properly, how to unload their, their ACL tendon so that it's healthy. And I've packaged my treatment approach into a program called the ACL Tear Recovery Program. You can learn more about this in the details below. And I've also got a bunch of videos here on YouTube in a playlist called the ACL Tear Help Playlist. You'll find that down in the description below as well. Hey, if this video was helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up, please like it. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you get notified of every video that we release so you can get help. And drop a comment below if you have any questions, if something like this on the list that I gave you right now is affecting you or you, you want to learn more about it, ask a question. We'd love to answer questions. If you've ever been helped by one of our videos in the past, let us know as well. That always makes her day. And please share this with somebody you think needs to see this as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.